at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Coming up, more Americans evacuated after testing positive for the coronavirus. I'm Andrew Dimber in Washington with the latest. Is it the calm before the storm? Outside with live cam, taking some low clouds that are covering the tops of the higher buildings, including the tower in the downtown area this morning. Good morning to you. It is Tuesday. It is February 18th. Thanks for being with us this morning, everybody. Gosh, yesterday was just yucky. Not quite as bad this morning as it was yesterday, but it's still not a very nice morning. It's not. And as I peek over your shoulder, Leslie, I see a little bit of activity on radar right now. I guess the question is, Mike, for you, is any of it reaching the ground yet? Yeah, because yeah, I mean, it's so humid out there. Mm -hmm. uh, nothing's evaporating. Is and it warmer it, than yesterday? Uh, temperatures are 67, about the same right now is what they were yesterday. So we're about 20 degrees above normal. Uh, we're at the normal high temperature right now. We will get up into the 70s today. We hit 81 yesterday and then the bottom is going to drop out. So the front's going to move through probably late afternoon. OK, so, I'm looking yeah. forward to it. If you are heading out right now and going to be gone through even dinner time, I'd grab a jacket, grab an umbrella because uh, you will need it because yes, we do have a few showers out there. Everything's moving from basically Oh, call it southwest to northeast. It is on the light side. There may be one or two spots. It's got a, a little more of a decent uh, shower here and there, and a few of them are sliding through town as of. Uh, also, the roads are just kind of damp out there because of all the mist, the drizzle. There is some fog visibility right now. It's not too bad, not to as thick as what it was around the area yesterday, but uh, four miles up the road toward Bernie, three at Randolph, and uh, three over in Rock Springs. May get a little thicker at, uh, at times, though. And temperatures, yeah, they're are way, way up there. Once again, everybody, we had some 50s yesterday. Everybody's in the 60s this morning, mid to upper 60s, and all the allergens at least are on the low side. As far as the forecast, temperatures are going to be staying fairly steady throughout the rest of the morning. A couple of showers out there, and then later on this afternoon, make it up to 72 degrees. That's going to be basically right after school. Looks like about 3, 4 o'clock, and then the front's going to move on through here in toward dinner time. So temperatures will be dropping down into probably the mid to upper 50s by roughly dinner time, and wind's going to shift around out of the north. It's going to be breezy today, and we'll have more showers, even a couple of thunderstorms. And it's going to be wet and cold and kind of windy the next couple of days. Grilled cheese and soup weather. Details coming up. Time saver traffic right now. Here's Officer Marcus Trujillo. I bet nothing yet, but Make it interesting, right? It could get very, very interesting. Now, actually, we were pretty fortunate yesterday. We didn't have as many hiccups on the roadway as uh, we thought we could have had, uh, given the driving conditions. Now, right now, things look pretty good with no accidents out there. So as we progress from the map over to TransGuide, let's take a look. This is 35 Olympia Parkway. You can see north and southbound lanes, just a little hint of haze there, but really nothing that should affect you, uh, whether you're northbound or southbound. Then Highway 151 and 410 still looking pretty good in that area. Over by the airport, things look a little bit clearer. 281 and 410, you can see even the connector ramp so far looking pretty good. Mark and Leslie. Thank you, Marcus. Latest on the coronavirus concerns. More than a dozen Americans who tested positive for the virus are back in the United States. This while over 300 other people aboard a cruise ship in Japan are forced to stay on board. ABC's Andrew Dimber joins us from Washington with the latest. This morning, 14 Americans evacuated from a cruise ship in Japan who tested positive for coronavirus are back in the U.S. Some arrived in Texas Monday before traveling to a specialized national quarantine unit in Nebraska for further evaluation. We have the facilities, we have the resources and the expertise to handle these kind of individuals. Ten have already tested positive for the virus, now officially named COVID-19. And on that Diamond Princess cruise ship in Japan, so far, 454 cruise passengers have been infected. Passenger Jerry Larson was one of those stuck at sea. It was fine. We were very well taken care of. We were very lucky. We had uh, a bigger room and a full balcony. Uh, they fed us well. I felt like they were taking extremely good care of us. Meanwhile, a second flight of evacuated Americans from Japan. The bus will take you to the airplane. The airplane takes you to the United States. Landing at Travis Air Force Base in California, another quarantine zone. I have to put my mask on. At least four of those passengers also testing positive and across the globe, coronavirus crossing more than two dozen countries while World Health officials work to stop the spread. WHO is continuing to work night and day on several fronts to prepare countries. We're providing advice to countries on how to do screening, testing, contact tracing and treatment. 
All but two of the cases in the U.S. are linked to travel to Wuhan, China, the center of the outbreak. Andrew Dimbert, ABC News, Washington. Well, scammers are taking advantage of the coronavirus with websites, fake emails, texts, and social media posts. The Federal Trade Commission is sending out a warning about the ploys to get your money. Be aware of emails claiming to be from the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. Also, don't click on links from sources you're not familiar with and pay attention to email addresses. Scammers try to make themselves look like a legitimate agency. In your morning headlines, Boy Scouts of America has filed for bankruptcy protection as it faces new sexual abuse lawsuits. The filing is an attempt to work out a potential compensation plan for abuse victims that will allow the 110-year-old organization to continue. Could be forced to sell off some of its property holdings in order to raise money for the fund. That could go well beyond $1 billion. Could be one of the biggest and most complex bankruptcies ever seen. Europe's largest bank, HSBC, reported a 33% fall in pre-tax profit for 2019. The bank announced it's cutting 35,000 jobs over the next three years. HSBC warned that the ongoing coronavirus outbreak could pressure its business in Asia. The bank's plan with the United States is to reduce branch network by 30% and reposition as an international client-focused corporate bank. Amazon founder Jeff Bezos says he plans to spend $10 billion of his own money to help fight climate change. Bezos said in an Instagram post he'll start giving grants this summer to scientists, activists, and nonprofits. He says he'll call his new initiative the Bezos Earth Fund. Amazon officials say they're working to reduce their carbon footprint and will have to have, would rather work to have 100% of the company's energy use come from renewable sources by the year 2030. 436, 67 degrees. Still ahead on GMSA, rapper and songwriter 50 Cent is trying out something other than music. He's producing a new television show. that makes his new show for life unlike anything you've seen before. A student at Smithson Valley High School never got to meet her grandmother because of cancer. I'm Sarah Costa coming up on GMSA, how she is now raising money for those fighting cancer. And outside with live cam, very warm start to today. And then as you might heard Mike say, the bottom is about to fall out. A huge drop in temperatures on the way, pretty much for the rest of the week. We'll be back. Four forty. Welcome back from Cancer and Mental Health Awareness to Recycling Shoes. Four students at Smithson Valley High School have started their own service campaigns for causes that are important to them. Sophomore Avery Walker is working with the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society to raise money for a cause very near to her heart. Sarah Costa spoke with Avery about what drives her to give back. Hope for Peggy. It's the name of Avery Walker's campaign where she is raising money for the local Leukemia Lymphoma Society. Peggy is the name of her grandmother who she never met because she died of cancer. And Avery says she is the motivation for her project. My grandmother was like my inspiration for this because I never got to meet her. She passed away from breast cancer before I was even born. And not only do the funds that like we raise for leukemia and lymphoma go to that, but it goes to other cancers, breast cancer, like my grandmother had. So I know I'm helping everybody. Avery is raising money for her seven week campaign that ends at the end of February. She is holding several collections for the South Texas Leukemia and Lymphoma Society, the nonprofit funds leading edge research for every type of blood cancer, including leukemia, lymphoma and other rare types of blood cancers. The campaign is part of the Leukemia and Lymphoma Student of the Year program, where select high school students across the country participate in a fundraising competition to benefit the nonprofit. It's the number one childhood cancer and it's a really big problem and you don't realize how many people like actually have it. People like you talk to every day until you actually start like bringing awareness to it. You'll never realize that they've like had it or been affected by it. You can find a link to Avery's donation page on KSAT.com. For GMSA, I'm Sarah Acosta, KSAT 12 News. Good for her, making a difference. Remarkable young lady. Yeah. 442, 67 degrees. Still ahead on GMSA. How to get the best experience when shopping for eyeglasses, whether online or in the store. New documentary, NBA star Dwayne Wade speaks out about being the father to a transgender child. More in your GMA First Look.
morning's GMA First Look, NBA superstar Dwayne Wade opening up like never before in the new ESPN documentary, D. Wade, Life Unexpected. A lot of you guys see me as a superhero. The 38-year-old revealing details about not only his professional life, but his family as well, raising his four children, including 12-year-old daughter Zaya, who recently came out as transgender. Wade says he and his wife, actress wife. Gabrielle Union, did not have all the answers when Zaya first approached them and began educating themselves to support their daughter. Okay. So if my child comes home and say, hey, dad, I feel that I am a she. My job is to help you become who you are. And coming up at 7 a.m., the three-time champion joins Robin Roberts. With your GMA First Look, I'm Elizabeth Herr, ABC News, New York. Well, for many, shopping for eyeglasses is a necessity. For others, it's a fashion statement. 12 in Your Sides, Marilyn Morris takes a look at which stores and online retailers get high marks from shoppers. There's no question you'll get more personal attention when you shop for glasses at a store than you will online. But you'll probably also get a bigger price tag. Cost is the big drawback at traditional retailers, according to a Consumer Reports survey of its readers. Those who bought their glasses at a store and paid out of pocket spent a median $234 a pair. Online shoppers, though, paid a median price of just $91. Even so, the vast majority still bought their glasses in a store. It's all about the service. I like the experience of having something to try on in front of me. Our readers value things like the skilled fitting and follow-up service you get with a real salesperson. Costco was among the top retailers in CR's most recent ratings because you can get personal service and a reasonable price. But the frame selection is more limited than independent retailers and top online stores. Three online stores, Warby Parker, Zenny Optical, and iBuyDirect, joined Costco at the top of the ratings with good prices. But Zenny and iBuy did not do as well on quality. A tip for getting the best of both worlds is shop around for the frames you like and then go to a discount store like Costco or Walmart to get the lenses. A lot of times the technicians at those discount stores can take the lenses you buy there and put them into the frames that you buy elsewhere. There's usually a fee of about $40. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. 447. Time to check on the roadways. Is it quiet out there right now? So far, still quiet. That's 281 at 410. So no changes from our last check of weather here in this part of the city. Things still look pretty good. Let's move around to some other areas. This is 281 and Winding Way. North and South Bond Lane still have not uh, woken up yet, so to speak. So no increases in the traffic just yet. And 604 Kyle Seal, we're starting to see a few more vehicles, both on the eastbound and the westbound lane. So keep that in mind. 604 in Badera, no problems there. And 410 at Perrin Vital also have a handful of vehicles in each direction. So all in all, not a bad start uh, as we move around to different areas. This is the downtown city. I-10 at the Y. You can see travel in both directions. Uh, Looking pretty good. There's Highway 90, Medio Creek. That's out there by the, or the uh, Highway 90 1604 interchange. And as you can see, very nicely lit up, all nice and bright. The best part of that is, look at all that empty space waiting for vehicles this morning. <laughs> More street lights per capita probably than any other part of town right now. It's so hard to imagine it being cold and needing a coat because it's just so darn warm out there. Mm -hmm. yeah. It was very warm yesterday. We did get a, a lot more sunshine than expected yesterday. And so instead of like 78, it's 81 yes. for high temperature. It was so humid. Yeah, and it, very humid this morning. And we're going to make it up to right around low 70s today. And the timing of the front, uh, it, it'll come through the northern part of the hill country maybe about noon. But it looks like here in town it's going to be somewhere 3, 4 o'clock. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll hit about 72. And then temperatures are going to be starting to drop down about uh, 10, 15 degrees or so initially in behind it. And we will have... Uh, uh, windier conditions and supposed to rain. All right, here's a great picture of the clouds. And like the caption says, see the airplane? Everybody, everybody, see the airplane? There's the nose. Oh, we all agree on. We can take, actually see the same thing in the clouds. So. That's the first time that's ever happened? I think so. And no, that's not an angry dog, Mouton. Anyway, uh, we do have kind of some misty, drizzly conditions out there once again this morning. Also, just some good old rain out there. So at least, you know, we are going to be seeing rain today as well as tomorrow and probably on Thursday. So that's the, the benefit to it, even though it's going to be kind of a cold rain the next couple of days. And these uh, showers are continuing to work their way off to the northeast. Most of it is on 
on the light side, but there are a couple little spots here and there where it may be a, a bit heavier. And like I said, a couple of thunderstorms can't be ruled out later on today. Visibility is not bad. Um, just you know, watch out for some of this fog to perhaps thicken up later on this morning. But again, nothing like what we had around here yesterday. Mild temperatures uh, about at our normal high right now. And this is what the uh, computer model is looking like. Showers throughout a good chunk of the morning as well as this afternoon. And there's the front, which is sliding on through here. But notice how we still have all this rain in behind it because we've got an overrunning situation, which basically means you got cold air down here at the surface. You got warm, moist air upstairs coming in from the uh, Pacific Ocean. And that's why it's just going to stay gray and cold and wet and also windy in behind this front. Just the kind of weather that if you could hunker down, stay in bed all day, it'd be perfect for it the next few days. 69 degrees today at noon. There will be a few showers around the area. And then later on this afternoon, like I said, a high temperature of 72. That's going to be about, say, 3 o'clock. But by late, the after, late in the afternoon, uh, say, 5, 5 o'clock dinner time or so, be down around 58 degrees here in town. Cooler in the hill country. Wind is going to be out of the north at 15 to 25 miles per hour. Even even a couple of uh, thunderstorms are possible out there. Uh, not very likely, though, as that front moves on through. And then it's going to be on the breezy side overnight and in through most of the day tomorrow. And temperatures basically won't go anywhere tomorrow. We stay in the pretty much mid, maybe upper 40s with more showers around here. It is going to be breezy tomorrow. Uh, more showers and again, temperatures over the next couple of days aren't going to hardly move at all. We'll make it down to the low 40s by Thursday morning and then only roughly the mid 40s. Now, Friday, a little bit of sunshine. It is going to be on the uh, the cool side and it's kind of breezy again. 52 for high temperature, 55 on Saturday, more clouds and a couple of showers are possible on Sunday. We will get back up to close to 70 by Monday and it looks like we might have another uh, We'll shout out some cooler air by the mid to latter portion of next week. Again. Michael, at some point I need to wash my car. Okay. <laughs> do you feel personally responsible? <laughs> I do not. <now>. <laughs> Just go over here, then. Never mind. <laughs> right now it's 452, 67 degrees. It was a big weekend for Parasite, the Oscar winner for Best Picture. How many millions the film brought into the box office? Coming up next. A new season of American Idol premiered this weekend, but the ratings were not as high as last year's. For the latest on what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Jason Nathanson. I am living my best life on Earth. Sonic the Hedgehog truly is raking in an estimated 70 million bucks in North America for the four-day weekend, 20 million more than the high end of expectations. Its Friday, Saturday, Sunday haul of 58 million is the best ever for a movie based on a video game, beating last year's Pokemon Detective Pikachu by a couple of million. Uh-oh. And a big Oscar bump for Parasite, the Best Picture winner, scoring an estimated 6.8 million Friday through Monday, the film's best ever weekend show. -out. I, Aaron Wallace, I'm serving a life sentence for something I didn't do. If you haven't checked out the prison drama For Life, Episode 2 airs tonight, produced by 50 Cent and starring Nicholas Pinnock. The series is based on the real story of an inmate who became a lawyer in an attempt to win his freedom, and it's actually filmed in real prisons, including Queens Detention Center and Sing Sing. There was one time we were, we were in, um, I think it was Queens, Queens, yeah. and we were in this uh, one of the pods where you have a, a number of cells. That's why I was missing. And there was a door. Yeah, someone, <laughs> someone was missing. For Life airs Tuesday nights on ABC. We, we the return of American Idol dominated Sunday night, topping the ratings. The premiere was off just a little bit from last year, though, about 7%. Guess who's back? And music mogul Dr. Dre with a birthday today. He's 54. They say rap's changed. They want to know how I feel about it. While two-time Oscar nominee John Travolta is 66. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Athenson, ABC News, Los Angeles. 456, 67 degrees. You do that so well. Thank you. Actor, author, musician Jeff Bridges can add one more thing to his resume. All about the children's book he's illustrating coming up next on GMSA. Plus pilot able to take off from the ground and reach high altitude, all using a jet pack rather. More details in Tech Bites. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Remembering a fallen soldier in Military City, USA. What family had to say about Sergeant First Class Javier Gutierrez's life and when you can pay your respects. Plus, hundreds of people turned away from a California park after a six-year-old girl 
is attacked and bitten by a mountain lion. Video of the wild cat caught on camera. And taking a look outside with live cam, it's another muggy, warm start to your day, but changes are on the way. Mike has the details. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to your Tuesday. It is February the 18th, and I'm solo for now because Mark was not feeling very well. So Mike is still here, though, and he hopefully has some good news about the weather for us, like maybe colder air coming our way at some point. Yes, later on this afternoon, late this afternoon, colder air is going to start to work its way in here. The front is just up uh, to the north of our area as of right now, so it is still unfebruary like when you step outside. As a matter of fact, these numbers are still what our normal high temperatures are basically this time of year in the uh, pretty much mid 60s, and there is a lot of humidity dew point above 60 that's always that magic number when you get above 60 you can really feel the humidity you can feel it when you step outside this morning there's a lot of mist there's a lot of drizzle and there's a lot of rain around the area as well. We do have a pretty good chunk of rain sliding across here from uh, southwest to northeast, and that's just a kind of a little taste of things to come because pretty much we're going to have rain for the next couple of days. Now, obviously, it's not going to be constant, but we will. Uh, it's just going to be wet for the next few days, and it's warm and wet right now. Then it's going to be cold and wet later on this afternoon. Most of this is on the light side. Even a couple uh, maybe decent little downpours here and there. And on top of this, there has been a lot of mist. So just assume that all the roads are wet this morning. So these temperatures are in the 60s right now. Uh, by the way, all the allergens as of yesterday's count, there's a laundry list out there, but everything is on the, uh, the low side. We will have showers, maybe even a couple of storms as that front starts to approach. We're going to hit the low 70s later on today, right about say three o'clock. Uh, the front's obviously going to move into the hill country first of all, and it'll be about three to four o'clock as it moves on through. And then by dinner time, temperatures are going to be dropping down uh, by oh, good 10, maybe 15 degrees. So we're looking at roughly mid 50s by dinner time. And then tomorrow, cold, wet and breezy. And the rest of the week, it's going to be cloudy, chilly and damp. We get a little bit of a break from some of the rain by probably Friday, Saturday, and then perhaps a little more rain late in the weekend. It's going to warm up by the weekend, but the next few days, just get ready. Details coming up in a couple of minutes. Time saver traffic right now. Here's Officer Marcus Trujillo. Wet roads, what does that mean? Well, that's a recipe for disaster on your morning commute. So, so far we're doing pretty well. However, we all know that there's that second wave of traffic that hits a little bit closer between 6.30 and 7 o'clock. So right now, enjoy it while you can. Roadways look pretty good. Let's take a look at Transguide. Highway 90 at Medio Creek, eastbound and westbound lanes, no problems all the way through Highway 90 at Lackland. And as we take a look at uh, Highway 90 at Military, you can see still a few more vehicles out there on the roadway on those eastbound main lanes, westbound not too bad. Then I-10 at Hoyerman also starting to get a few more vehicles out there on the highways. Leslie? Yes, well, the San Antonio soldier who was killed in action more than a week ago is being remembered and honored this week. His family now hoping Military City USA will join them in their final goodbyes. Sergeant First Class Javier Gutierrez, his father, shared with us how Javier's military interest grew as he got older, watching several family members serve throughout the years. In high school, he joined the ROTC, and soon after he graduated, he enlisted in the Army. Now, Gutierrez believed his son wouldn't have had a lasting career in the military, would have had a lasting career in the military, but he and many others are still coming to terms with the loss of a hero. Mayor Ron Nirenberg ordered flags to be flown at half staff to honor the fallen soldier. A public viewing will be held at Community Bible Church this Friday from noon to one, and services will be held from one to three. NASCAR fans are breathing a sigh of relief this morning following a horrific crash that ended the Daytona 500 yesterday. ABC's Kenneth Moten shows us the moments before driver Ryan Newman's Ford was sent flying. This morning, concern for NASCAR star Ryan Newman after this crash. Just before the end of the Daytona 500, Newman's car flipped, hurtling down the track on its roof. In a shower of sparks on his roof. The number six Ford coming to rest, still on fire as fuel was seen pouring out of it. Watch the crash again. Newman was in the lead, nearing the finish line when his car spun and hit the wall head on. It went airborne and collided with the car of Corey LaJoy. When the car stopped sliding on its roof, crews rushed to put out the flames. Spectators stunned. Sports anchor Joe Kepner from our Orlando ABC station WFTV right there. It was easy to see the wreck because it happened directly in front of us where we were standing in Victory Lane, but it was difficult to see after that because of how far the car slid after that. We know that Ryan Newman, they had to cut the roof off of his car to get him out. EMTs rushed the 42-year-old to the hospital. The vehicle, a mangled mess as it was later hauled off the track. Denny 
Denny Hamlin won the race by a fraction of a second, his second straight Daytona win. But his celebration quickly became subdued because of the terrifying crash just moments before. Number one, we, we, we're, we're praying for Ryan. Newman's wife, Chrissy, who announced their separation last week, reacting with just this on Twitter, OMG. Overnight, fans celebrated outside this Daytona Beach hospital after news spread that Newman's injuries are not life-threatening. Kenneth Moten, ABC News, New York. A California park is closed after rangers say a six-year-old girl was attacked and bitten by a mountain lion Sunday morning. Hundreds of hikers were turned away from the Rancho San Antonio County Park in Santa Clara County this week following the attack near a popular trail. A trail camera captured a fuzzy image of a mountain lion early today, but it's not clear whether it was the cat that attacked a child and later was scared off by her father. The six-year-old's condition is unknown at this time. Last summer, the park closed briefly after several people spotted mountain lions near the same trail. In national news, this February marks the 75th anniversary of the Battle of Iwo Jima, one of the bloodiest during World War II. Nearly 7,000 U.S. Marines died on a small Japanese island against 21,000 native defenders. The 36-day battle on Iwo Jima, halfway between Tokyo and Guam, was regarded as a strategic outpost. Japanese troops defended the island for more than a month, but the island eventually reverted to Japanese rule from the United States in 1968. It has since been home to Japanese Navy and Air Force personnel who operate a landing strip, also used by aircraft from a Japan-based U.S. aircraft carrier for night landing practice. And back here at home, Selena fans have something to look forward to this year as her legacy will be celebrated right here in San Antonio. The Quintanillas will be joining Mayor Ron Nirenberg at the Alamo Dome today for a special announcement, according to a news release from Q Productions. Details of the celebration remain under wraps, but fans have speculated what's next after the Fiesta de la Flor in Corpus Christi was canceled. 2020 marks 25 years since the singer was gunned down by Yolanda Saldivar. Your time now is 5.07, temperature outside 67 degrees. Still to come, from James Bond to Apple, the coronavirus is affecting everyone. Still ahead, why the tech company says the virus is affecting its business. And a billion dollar bond proposal for San Antonio schools. Coming up next, what they plan to do with all the money if it's passed. And as we head to break, a live look outside once again with live cam. We've got a rainy forecast for you and cold, cold weather. Stay with us. Welcome back, everybody. Your time now is 510. One of the largest bonds proposed by an area school district is expected after more than 40 campuses in San Antonio are in need of improvements. This fall, voters in San Antonio ISD will decide whether to pass a $1.15 billion bond. New development and increased property values are expected to pay for the district bonds for the next decade, so the proposed 2020 bond would not include a tax increase. Superintendent Pedro Martinez says the bonds will be presented to voters in phases. The first is expected to appear in the November ballot for $1.25 billion. It would pay for the first half of the 43 schools the district has slated for improvements. Sadly, so many of our buildings, um, so many of our teachers have worked in conditions that have never been ideal, and we got used to it. Voters in the district say based on what they've heard so far, they support the improvements, especially if it means no tax increase. If all goes well, in 2024, the superintendent intends to present another bond at the same price to upgrade the remaining 20-plus schools. If it's all approved, the 43 schools would be upgraded by 2030. It's now almost 12 minutes after 5, and it's still 67 degrees outside. A 1980s drama based on an Arkansas single mother's fight for people with AIDS is going to the big screen. Still ahead, who's going to play the advocate's role and when you can expect to see it in theaters. And committed to preserving our planet, but the owner of Amazon decided to drop billions towards the fight against climate change. Proof. Proof I can fight moderate to severe rheumatoid arthritis. Proof I can fight psoriatic arthritis. With Humira. Proof of less joint pain. And clearer skin in PSA. Humira targets and blocks a source of inflammation that contributes to joint pain and irreversible damage. 
Humira can lower your ability to fight infections. Serious and sometimes fatal infections including tuberculosis and cancers including lymphoma have happened, as have blood, liver, and nervous system problems, serious allergic reactions, and new or worsening heart failure. Tell your doctor if you've been to areas where certain fungal infections are common, and if you've had TB, hepatitis B, are prone to infections or have flu-like symptoms or sores. Don't start Humira if you have an infection. Humira is proven to help relieve pain, stop further joint damage, and clear skin in PSA. Want more proof? Ask your rheumatologist about Humira. Welcome back. It is now 515. In your morning consumer headlines, a Wendy's restaurant in Michigan is being investigated after video was shared online of someone, get this, bathing in the kitchen sink. Take a look. You can see the shirtless man in the kitchen sink. What is he thinking? Another person in uniform throws something into the sink and yells, wash yourself. Several employees have been fired over it. The health department has evaluated the restaurant since that incident and everything has been sanitized inside. Good to know. Well, good news for wine drinkers. Wine prices are expected to drop to their lowest levels in five years. The reason is because too many California grapes and low demand. That's according to the newly released State of the Wine Industry report for Silicon Valley Bank. Industry experts say consumers might be able to enjoy the sweet low prices for the next three years. And I believe it's like International Wine Drinking Day today, so go buy some wine, everybody, and enjoy it. Well, a huge leap forward in winged flight. In this morning's Tech Bites, how a team in Dubai managed to reach a high altitude on their jetpack. In today's Tech Bites, the coronavirus is having a major impact on Apple. The company is cutting its sales expectations for the current quarter. Apple says its smartphone supply is being hampered because Chinese factories have been closed. It also says the virus is affecting demand in China. And Amazon boss Jeff Bezos is committing $10 billion to fight climate change. The investment is seen as an answer to criticism of Amazon's environmental record because it uses so many planes and trucks. Bezos says Amazon will be carbon neutral neutral by 2040. And Jetpack developers are making great strides in Dubai. A test pilot was able to take off from the ground rather than jumping off a platform. He climbed faster than ever before and went higher, eventually reaching nearly 5,000 feet. He said the next step is to do it without a parachute. Those are your Tech bites. That's pretty cool. Mike, you'd love to do that, wouldn't you? Yes. I know you would. It'd be dangerous, but let's find out how the roadways are looking. Marcus, any new accidents to report? No accidents, but no, I'm not too sure about doing that without a parachute. I, I'm yeah, with I, you kind of on that one. It seems a little dangerous. Yeah, I'd get on there, but I uh, still want that. <clears throat> excuse me. Still want. <clears throat> excuse me. There we go. That. Still want that safety harness just in case. Highway 90 military, no issues there. 35 at Evans, though. We are starting to see some increases in the traffic uh, on those southbound main lanes. Northbound, still not too bad. I-10 and Crossroads travel in both directions, still running smoothly. And 410 at Northwest Military Highway, you can see, looks just a little hazy, but if you pay attention to the traffic, you can see there's more than enough room in both directions. I-10, 1604, the interchange also looking very well right now. So no delays currently in anyone's travel times that we can see. And uh, this looks odd. We're missing a spot. <laughs> I knew Marcus was going to do that. <laughs> mm, I'm not touching any of this stuff that he left on the <laughs> chair either because I don't know what it has on it because. When you notice I didn't sit in the chair. I know we don't. We need. Where's the Lysol? <laughs> we need one of those the hazmat suits with. Right. Because yeah he was not his tummy wasn't yeah, feeling right. And so that made us all a little nervous. Mm -hmm. Just get a big garbage bag put it over that yeah. chair and then you know move it. So. Well Max is on his way. He's trying his best to get here to help. Right, so we're going to make him sit there. Well that's what I'm saying. He needs to bring Lysol. Max if you're watching right now yeah. bring your Lysol because this and is going to be your chair. And gloves and a chem suit and yeah. a mask and anyway. Hang on. Oh, I think he has some. <laughs> hmm. Oh, here. Well. What? Uh oh. oh this is from. Well, this Mike is, usually this has everything. This is actually, whatever you need. He's just, this is actually from Casky. Okay. Oh, that, yeah, that'll do. All right. Disinfecting wipes. So. I'll get busy on this while you give us some forecast. You work on that. <laughs> Take a look at this picture and look what. Here they come. The little blue bonnets are starting to show Aww. up. We've already had a couple of uh, pictures of blue bonnets, and 
We've got a few more. And a lot of people are uh, kind of suspecting it's going to be a really good season for the Blue Bonnets just because it's been on the milder side. And we've had a fairly decent amount of rain throughout January and now February. And we're getting, obviously, a lot more over the next couple of days. It is uh, murky out there again. And there is a fair amount of rain moving in through the area. Most of it is on the lights up. We've got a couple of uh, spots where it may be just a tad heavier than that. And just assume that all the roads in and around town are wet this morning because even though Say, for instance, there's no rain on the south side right now. It's been just kind of misty drizzly all all night long. So all the roads were damp when I was driving into work this morning. There's a little bit of fog out there. Not much. Nothing like what we had yesterday. Two and a half miles visibility right now. Bernie, some of that may be also reduced visibility because of some of the rain. But just kind of take it easy when you hit the roads. And nothing uh, really pea soup around the area. Don't really suspect it. A little bit more out there toward Rock Springs. Mid-60s right now. Once again, we are at our normal high temperatures about 40 degrees excuse me about 20 degrees above normal we should be in the mid 40s right now beg your pardon and uh computer model this is the rapid update model and this one shows that we are going to continue to have showers pretty much all day long obviously it won't be raining constantly but there's going to be a fair amount of it out there and here's the front now this is about dinner time the front moving on through the air it's going to be kind of slow moving it is just up uh, to the northwest of the hill country as of right now and it will slowly work its way into northern portions of the hill country probably by noon and that's going to take it uh, another few hours to move on through here so right now looking at all the different computer models i'd say the timing of it is going to be sometime uh, say three four o'clock ish around here so i think we're going to be hitting our high temperature right around three o'clock this afternoon 72 degrees and then by dinner time five six o'clock we're going to be right around say the, the mid 50s and going in through the next couple of days we do continue to have more uh, showers around here now as far as temperatures like i said we get up into the low 70s later on today and then that front moves on through and so by dinner time we drop into the 50s 40s in the hill country and once we get down in the 40s it's pretty much going to stay there throughout the next couple of days and i mean we're really not going to be moving as far as temperatures tomorrow and then Thursday. So it's going to be cold, it's going to be damp, and it's going to be windy around here as we go into, especially tomorrow, maybe a little bit of a break in the wind on Thursday, and then we'll pick back up on Friday. 69 degrees today at noon, some showers around the area, maybe a thunderstorm thrown in as that front moves on through here. And then late this afternoon, we're going to be down to 58 degrees, so we'll top off about mid-afternoon, and the wind is going to shift around out of the north at roughly 15, 25 miles per hour, so kind of a blustery late afternoon, and then windy tomorrow as well. And again, temperatures don't really move all that much, and we will uh, stay in the 40s tomorrow, Thursday, windy, wet. Like I said, grilled cheese and soup kind of day, and Friday, a little bit of sunshine, but still only 52 degrees. We'll finally make it back up to roughly a normal reading by Sunday. All right, so we've sanitized, and Marcus found a bag to cover the chair. So you're welcome, Max. <laughs> Your time now is 522. It's 67 degrees hear outside. Chicken Mark when he's not. <laughs> and poor Mark. Well, we don't want those germs all over the place. From winning the Oscars to becoming a children's book illustrator, who motivated Jeff Bridges and when his book is expected to hit shelves? And your lottery numbers as we had to break. You pick three numbers, five, six, three, with a, what, what do they call them now? Bonus ball? What do they call these now? I don't remember. Anyway, nine. The what? What is it called? Oh, fireball. That's it. Thank you. Nine. Daily, four numbers, two, one, four, seven, with a fireball of four. Cash, five numbers, two, five, 11, 25, 32. Texas two step 16, 20, 21, 31 with a bonus ball of 11. Welcome back. It is now just about 26 minutes after five. Sonic the Hedgehog continues to rock box office numbers and Jeff Bridges has added another skill to his career. This time as a children's book illustrator. CNN's David Daniel has a wrap up in your Hollywood Minute. Why would you throw your life away for this silly little alien? Hey, good time. He's my friend. James Marsden says starring in the box office topping Sonic the Hedgehog was especially meaningful to him because he loved playing the Sonic games as a kid. This feels like such a special thing and, and I'm lucky to be a part of it because not only as an actor but like as a fan of the game, 
you know, I, I, would have, I would be first in line to see the movie anyway, and I'm also a part of it, so it's pretty special. One of the best things about my job is I get to research different periods and different times. Ruth um, Wilson shouldn't have trouble remembering the title of her next movie, The Book of Ruth. Deadline reports the British actress is set to star in the 1980s drama based on the true story of Ruth Coker Burks, an Arkansas single mother who cared for and championed the cause of people with AIDS. Filming is scheduled for some time this year it really means uh, you know so so much uh, Jeff Bridges is an actor author musician yeah, photographer and now children's book illustrator according to the Hollywood Reporter the Oscar and SAG Award winner is creating the images for the book Daddy Daughter Day written by as you might guess his daughter Isabel Bridges Bosch the book is due out in October in Hollywood I'm David Daniel your time now is just about 28 minutes after 5, your temperature 67 degrees. Reducing homelessness in the Alamo City, new plan city officials are looking at to cover this coming April. And a man sent to the hospital after he drove off the road overnight. Up next on GMSA, how police say it all happened. Welcome back, everybody. It is 530 on your Tuesday morning, February the 18th. Thanks for being with us. I'm not solo because I have these guys with me, but somebody had to I, go home. I might, yeah, my, my co-pilot's gone because obviously he's got some illness, and so we've kind of quarantined his chair. <laughs> Tell just Max as a precaution. Gets here. Just as a precaution. Yeah. That's all. <laughs> I don't want to be sick. No. Like, don't even come into work, right? Exactly. Stay home. That's for all of you at home too. How is it looking? Speak, maybe we have an. Leslie excuse. said, "Stay home." So traffic's going to be better today. <laughs> Well, that would be nice, wouldn't it? Any accidents right now? No accidents right now, but the good news is we do not have the conditions to start off with that we had yesterday. So as far as the driving conditions for right now, they're better. However, anything can happen. Yes, rain in the area? Yeah, there's plenty of rain around here. The roads are definitely wet, and even if there hasn't been any you know, rain in your area, just consider the roads wet. I don't know about you all, but I saw everything was kind of damp. It was this damp. Morning, so yeah, a little bit of fog out there and very, very warm and humid again this morning. We're in the mid 60s, basically at our normal high temperature. And then later on this afternoon, now this is going to be this temperature right after school, about three, four o'clock. And then by dinner time, it's going to be dropping into about the about mid 50s or so. The front's going to move through. So tomorrow you need coats again. You need coats again, yes. If you are going to be leaving this morning and staying out through dinner time, take a coat with you, and it will be wet. It's not as though this front moving through is going to be clearing things out. That's the big problem with it. So here's what uh, radar looks like right now. Uh, we've got plenty of rain around the area, just uh, basically on the light side, maybe a couple of Mm, a little bit more than a light shower here and there, and that's pretty much going to be the situation throughout the day. Although later on this afternoon, as the front approaches, could actually see one or two of those uh, thunderstorms out there. And again, these temperatures are just way, way out of whack. For, we should be in the 40s right now. We're 20 degrees above normal, like I said, at the uh, normal high temperature as of right now. All the allergens are on the low side. I'm feeling mold may be uh, going up over the next couple of days. Of course, the updated count's going to be coming out at just about uh, 7 o'clock. So, uh, yeah, get ready because it's just going to be wet, cold, windy tomorrow, and it stays that way for the next couple of days. What about the weekend? Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Time saver traffic right now. Wet roads could mean problems. Anything could, out there? Could mean a long commute. Now, right now, things look pretty good, Mike. Folks, if you take a look at the map, you can see everything in the green right now. That means no delays. More importantly, no accident icon. So the highway is clear of any incidents at this time. So no congestion just yet, but it is still early. We still have at least an hour before we start getting that huge influx of traffic in all directions. Right now, 37 and Jones Avenue, you can see north and south by lane still running smoothly there with no problems. So here in the downtown area, so far, everything looking pretty good over by the airport. No problems. Just remember, watch that speed once you head out. And of course, make sure you buckle up. Leslie. Following late breaking news in South Bear County, crews are on the scene of a chase. It ended in a crash. This is happening near 281 South outside of 1604. Our Katrina Weber just arrived on the scene. She joins us now live with a report. So Katrina, what happened out there? Well, uh, as you said, there was a chase and a crash. It ended here on private property. Uh, this street is called Big Oak. 
We are just west of Highway Highway 281 South. This is where deputies are working. They call this a hot scene, an active scene. So they're keeping us back from where the car actually crashed on private property down there. Now this started out with a couple of looks. Deputies eyeing a car that they thought looked suspicious in the parking lot of a convenience store not far from here. And then the driver of that car seeing those deputies and taking off. This led to a chase that lasted probably 20 minutes or so. And from what we heard, the speeds topped out at about 105 miles miles an hour. At some points they were going the wrong way on the highway, but they did end up almost right back where they started after going all the way down to the Atascosa County line back on this property. Again, this is a private ranch down there. And that's where the car crashed. Three people bailed out, but deputies tell us they did catch two of those guys. They are still looking for that third one. You can see a deputy taking off pretty quickly here. We're not sure exactly what's happening, but perhaps something's developing. But uh, they were still looking for one suspect, the last word that we had. They do have two people in custody, and they found out that that car was stolen from Atascosa County. Reporting live in South Bear County, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. A man is behind bars this morning after he allegedly robbed a stop and save convenience store last month. Police say 21 year old Roy Martinez robbed the convenience store in the 7300 block of Marbach Road on the west side on January 20th. Police say they received a tip given to Crime Stoppers and they were able to locate Martinez. According to an arrest affidavit, Martinez displayed a handgun and demanded money from the register. Martinez is being held on a $75,000 bond. Also new this morning, one man is in the hospital after he drove off the road on the southwest side of town. San Antonio police say this crash happened just before 3 a.m. when a man in his 60s was driving in the southbound lanes of I-35 near Somerset. He suffered some type of medical episode. It caused him to drive between lanes and then down under the bridge. He was taken to the hospital. His condition right now is unknown. Meanwhile, we're following the latest on how the city is planning to reduce homelessness in San Antonio. A consultant hired is expected to present full recommendations in April. In a committee meeting yesterday, Alicia Lemer says there's a lot already being done. Lemer is a policy analyst for Homebase, a California-based nonprofit hired by the city. Some recommendations they already have made include increasing investment in community-based housing and service options, expanding a homeless outreach pilot program, and analyzing who's most frequently using services and resources. Members of the Public Health Committee uh, had questions about the process and plan, some of which may spark some second looks for home base. And now to the latest on the coronavirus outbreak. More than a dozen Americans who tested positive for the coronavirus are back in the United States, while over 300 other people aboard a cruise ship in Japan are forced to stay on board. ABC's Andrew Dimbert joins us from Washington with the latest. This morning, 14 Americans evacuated from a cruise ship in Japan who tested positive for coronavirus are back in the U.S. Some arrived in Texas Monday before traveling to a specialized national quarantine unit in Nebraska for further evaluation. We have the facilities, we have the resources and the expertise to handle these kind of individuals. Ten have already tested positive for the virus, now officially named COVID-19. And on that Diamond Princess cruise ship in Japan, so far, 454 cruise passengers have been infected. Passenger Jerry Larson was one of those stuck at sea. It was fine. We were very well taken care of. We were very lucky. We had uh, a bigger room and a full balcony. Uh, they fed us well. I felt like they were taking extremely good care of us. Meanwhile, a second flight of evacuated Americans from Japan. The bus will take you to the airplane. The airplane takes you to the United States. Landing at Travis Air Force Base in California, another quarantine zone. I have to put my mask on. At least four of those passengers also testing positive and across the globe, coronavirus crossing more than two dozen countries while World Health officials work to stop the spread. WHO is continuing to work night and day on several fronts to prepare countries. We're providing advice to countries on how to do screening, testing, contact tracing, and treatment. All but two of the cases in the U.S. are linked to travel to Wuhan, China, the center of the outbreak. Andrew Dimbert, ABC News, Washington.
An emergency meeting is being held today by a group of federal judges over concerns about the Department of Justice's intervention in politically sensitive cases. According to USA Today, the president of the National Association of Federal Judges said the issue, quote, could not wait until its spring conference. This comes after more than 2,000 former prosecutors and Justice Department officials signed a statement calling on Attorney General William Barr to resign due to his involvement in overruling the sentencing recommendations for Roger Stone. Well, it's not too late to sign up for our Vote 2020 Elections newsletter. Each Tuesday, we will email hand-picked coverage aimed at helping voters better understand the races, the candidates, the issues, and the implications. To sign up, just go to ksat.com slash newsletters. Your time now is 539, and it is 67 degrees outside. A North Carolina teen tackled to the ground after having a mental health episode, according to his mother. Still ahead, what his mother had to say about the incident caught on camera. And 13,000 square feet of bouncing space here in the Lone Star State. Coming up next, a look at the world's largest bounce house coming our way. And live cam giving us a look outside. It's a wet one. Don't get your umbrella. You need your coat later on this afternoon. Not this morning, though. Strain coat will do for the morning. Welcome back, everybody. Your time now, 542. Right now on KSAT.com, the world's biggest bounce house is coming to Texas. Big Bounce America has been supersized to 13,000 square feet of fun with a giant slide, ball pit, and oversized couches. For more information on dates and ticket prices, just visit our website. Of course, that's KSAT.com. Your temperature outside, 67 degrees. North Carolina security caught tackling a teen to the ground. Still ahead, how his mother says it all happened and what her son is being charged with. 60% of children with mental illness in Bear County do not receive proper treatment. I'm Sarah Acosta, coming up on GMSA, how two local students are fighting for those with mental illness. Welcome back, your time now is 545. Now to a violent takedown outside a hospital in North Carolina. Surveillance video showing security guards tackling a 16-year-old to the ground. The boy's mother had just brought him to the hospital. She says her son was having a mental health episode and needed help. Her son is now being charged. Here's ABC's Joe Benitez. Tonight, the dramatic video showing a security guard slamming a 16-year-old to the ground. He was treated like a criminal. Nobody ever treated him like a patient. Watch as Jessica Long and her 16-year-old son Hayden arrive at the hospital. She says he was having a mental health crisis. Hayden shoves her. That's when the security guard pushes the teen to the ground twice, drawing his stun gun. As the teen walks back, another security guard tackles him. I was still thinking, these men will help. Their, their goal will be to help me help my son, and they, they didn't do that. It spiraled even further when Lincoln County deputies arrived. They say the teen spit blood in their face. The video shows one deputy punching the handcuffed teen in the head and another tackles him. Hospital management saying they feel badly that the teen was injured in the December incident, but are defending their security guards, saying at first the teen claimed to have a gun threatening to shoot people. And the 16-year-old is now facing four charges, including felony malicious conduct. Meanwhile, one of the deputies is no longer employed. Gio Benitez, ABC News, New York. 100,000 kids in Bear County are affected by mental health, and 60% of them will not receive the treatment that they need. It's why two students at Smithson Valley High School have made it their goal to raise more than $5,000 for the Junior League of San Antonio's mental health campaign. Sarah Costa spoke with both of those students about why they believe the need is more important than ever. One in five children are impacted by mental illness in Bear County. And now two local students at Smithson Valley High School, they recognize that. And they want others to know that they are not alone and that there are ways to get help. And when you have a physical illness, you go to the doctor. But when you have something mental with your you know, mind or whatever, normally they people just keep it in and they like think that, oh, it's something wrong with them. And so I think we just need to change that to make sure like people do go in for help if they do have mental problems. I don't think people realize that a healthy mind is just as important as a healthy body. It's why Ryan and Colin at Smithson Valley High School have decided to raise money and awareness for mental health through the Junior League of San Antonio's Paving New Paths campaign that is raising funds for the Clarity Child Guidance Center. The center is the only nonprofit mental health treatment center in South Texas for children ages 3 to 17 that need evaluations, therapy, 
and crisis treatment surrounding mental health. The center helps provide financial aid to children that are struggling with mental illness that don't have health insurance or the means for treatment. It's why Ryan and Colin are supporting the center. And to let others know, there are ways for them to get help even with financial obstacles. Mental health isn't really talked about that much, so we just really want to show people that there is that outlet and support for them. I have a sister who's three years old, and like I'm just thinking, like, what is the world going to be like in you know, 10 to 20 years? I want her to grow up where you know, if she does have any issues or other people have issues, it can be addressed. Ryan and Colin hope to raise more than $5,000. They are holding a variety of fundraisers through concession sales and partnerships with local businesses. To support their cause, you can find their donation link on KSAT.com. For GMSA, I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Very impressive kids. Let's check the roadway, see how your traffic is looking this morning. I know the roads are wet. Marcus, any problems? Not yet. Uh, right now, you're taking a look at the map. You can see no incidents uh, as far as the map is concerned. Everything in the green, so that's the great news. Now, we're going to switch from this map over to TransGuide. Let's take a look at a couple of TransGuide cameras. 30, uh, right now, 35 in Zingle 1. Norton Southbound Lanes, you see that little bit of fuzz there to the uh, camera, to your viewing lens, but 35, 37, all the way through Ben's Ingleman, no accidents, and travel times are normal. Even up here, 35 at 1604, outside 1604 at Evans. Here at uh, 35, 410, no problems from north or the southbound lanes. Mike? All right, sir, a lot of the roads, though, around town are definitely on the damp side. Even if it hasn't started to rain where you are, we've had a lot of mist and uh, just kind of that heavy mist, sort of like yesterday. So just take it easy. And then there is plenty of rain being picked up on radar right now. And as you can see, it's all moving from southwest to northeast. And that will continue to be the situation. That's why we're going to be staying cloudy and wet and cold over the next couple of days, despite the fact we have a front moving through later on today. Um, it's just basically again on the, the light side, but we'll continue to keep some of these showers around. It won't rain constantly, but most of the day. Now, as far as visibility, there is a little bit of fog and some of this is also because of the, uh, the rain. Some of the reduced visibility a mile and a half up the road in toward Bernie, two and a half out there in Rock Springs, but it's not anything like what we had yesterday with that very, very thick fog in places. Temperatures are 20 degrees above normal, basically, or even more than that. We're at uh, normal high temperature right now, and we will continue to uh, warm up. We'll continue to see rain around throughout the rest of the morning and a good chunk of the afternoon. And then right here, that's basically the front, which is going to move through here. It's not a fast moving front, so it's going to come into the hill country uh, probably about noon, early afternoon, and then make it through here in San Antonio. I'm going for about three, four o'clock in the afternoon. So we'll hit our high temperature roughly three o'clock this afternoon, and then we're going to start to drop down later on. We will continue to have more of these showers around here, and that's going to be the situation in through tomorrow as well. Maybe even a couple of thunderstorms, especially as that front's moving through. So here's what it looks like with temperatures. Mid 60s right now, we make it into the low 70s. And again, that's late afternoon. Then the front comes on through here, and we're going to be dropping down into the 50s by dinner time, and then 40s overnight. Once we get down to the 40s, thermometers really aren't going to go anywhere for about a good 48 hours or so. We stay in the 40s throughout the day tomorrow as well as on into uh, Thursday. Now, actually, the cloud cover is going to keep us from getting even colder, as cold as what we could get because it's going to act like an insulation blanket, but it just stays, like I said, steady temperatures. And as far as the uh, humidity, there's the drier air moving on in here, but with the colder air in place, relative humidity is going to be very, very high. So therefore, it's going to be that sort of damp cool along with all the, uh, the moisture that's in the atmosphere, along with the, the cooler temperatures and that rain. Now, the front moves on through here. We still, though, have we got the colder air at the surface. We've got this overrunning situation, and that's going to remain for the next couple of days with those upper level winds coming in here out of the southwest. So that keeps the clouds around. That helps keeps the rain around 69 today at noon. Some showers around here will hit our high temperature of going for 72 again right around three o'clock. And then by late this afternoon, we're down into the 50s right around dinner time. And then we drop into the 40s tomorrow. We stay in the 40s. Then through Thursday, it's going to be breezy tonight after that front moves through and throughout the day tomorrow. Uh, windy, wet and cold and wet and cold Thursday. Friday, a little bit of sunshine, but still on the cold side, 52, 55 Saturday, and finally up to normal by Sunday. But grab yourself a extra sweatshirt and some fire logs and some good warm soup. I've loaded up on fire logs, and I already bought, <clears throat> excuse me, all the stuff to make my chicken and dumplings tomorrow night.
and you're going to be bringing in. I leftovers. will bring you some leftovers. Oh, really? I'll have enough this time. Mm -hmm. I will. My friend. Yeah. I'm so nice to you. 553 and 67 Sometimes. degrees. I'm always nice to you. Caught red handed. Up next, who Taylor Swift's dad got into a fight with after he was caught breaking into his penthouse. Your lottery numbers as we had to break. Your pick three numbers are 563 with a fireball of nine. Daily four numbers 2147 with a fireball of four. Cash five, two, five, 11, 25, 32. Texas two step, 16, 20, 21, 31 with a bonus ball of 11. Good morning. Coming up right here on GMA, we are live from Daytona after that fiery wreck, a terrifying crash on the last lap of NASCAR's biggest race. We'll have the latest on driver Ryan Newman's condition, and one of the drivers involved in the wreck is joining us only on GMA. Good morning and happy Tuesday. A Florida burglar in hot water this morning after getting into an altercation with Taylor Swift's father. According to court documents, Scott Swift returning to his $4 million penthouse last month just as Terrence Hoover, the man you see on your screen right now, was breaking in. That's when the two men got into a fight. Hoover took off, later arrested, charged with burglary. His mom says that it was all a misunderstanding. Taylor Swift was not with her father when that fight broke out. 68 degrees out in the next half hour of GMSA. Millions of families leaving their home country for a better chance at life. We're going to tell you about one woman helping refugees that need it most. And taking a live look out at the roads right now. 35 and 37. Looking okay out there. We're going to check in with Officer Marcus Trujillo just after the break. Making headlines this morning, China reporting even more cases of the coronavirus, nearly 100 new deaths. Plus, voters will soon have to decide whether to give one of the largest bonds ever proposed by an area school district approval. And taking a live look out at the Alamo City, I'm not even going to sugarcoat it. It is gross out there. Ugh. That's a meteorological live term. from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Good morning, San Antonio. Six o'clock this Tuesday, February 18th. Look who made it in. Max, thanks for coming Absolutely. in. Absolutely. Just honored to get the call, even if it was at 426 this morning. I know. Thank goodness your phone was on. Yes. I appreciate you mm. being here. And you're staying here through the nine. Staying here through the nine. Well, we appreciate that. But yeah, it was not a prudent commute, was it, to get in no, here? No, it was gross out there. And honestly, the hardest part was walking to the car because <laughs> it was just gross out there. Yes. Yeah, the humidity is very high. It, it's mi mist too, and yeah, there's some is. rain out there. Uh, and then get ready because uh, even though you didn't wear a coat this morning, you're going to need one by late uh, this afternoon and going into this evening. So if you are heading out, not going to be home until the evening hours, make sure you do take a coat because temperatures are going to be dropping down with that front moving on through. We do have uh, some showers out there right now, maybe a couple of uh, a little bit better than just a light shower there in northern Medina County and everything sliding across town. And, and even though maybe in some parts of town there's no rain right now or no showers being detected, like we we're talking about, there's a lot of mist. So the roads are pretty well damp all around the area. Temperatures are, yeah, we've actually gone up a degree in the past hour at 68. That's above the normal high temperature right now. And obviously 20, 25 degrees above where we should be as far as a low temperature. All the allergens are on the low side. There's kind of a laundry list out there. I have a feeling mold is really going to be going up with all this moisture in the air. And temperatures throughout the rest of the morning are going to be staying basically steady or perhaps even going up just a little bit. We'll make it up to um, right around 70 or so, upper 60s at noon. And then watch as this goes in through the afternoon. We're going to go up to about 72 degrees by 3 o'clock. And then the front comes on through here. The wind shifts around. And by late in the afternoon, 4 or 5 o'clock, we're going to be down in the 50s right around dinner time, and it's going to turn blustery as well with winds out of the north at primarily uh, about uh, 15, 25 miles per hour gusting from there. And then the cooler air is going to be sticking around in through the next couple of days. Temperatures really won't move in the next couple of days. Details in just a few minutes. Time saver traffic right now. Wet roads usually means 
gross on the roads as far as accidents, to quote Mr. Massey over there. Anything bad going Right on? now, nothing, but uh, it is still early, Mike. Remember, we usually don't get that influx of uh, traffic till between 630, 645. So right now, if you're getting ready to head out, shouldn't be that much of a problem, but you still want to give it a few extra minutes. If you're waiting a little bit longer, you probably want to give it an extra 10 to 15 minutes once you head out. And remember, reduce that speed, increase that following distance, and put away those distractions. Let's take a look at a couple of Transguide cameras, 35, 37, it, here in the downtown vicinity, no problems, but we are seeing heavier traffic there, 35 at Evans, that's 35 outside 1604. Right here, 35 and 410, so far those southbound lanes and northbound lanes still running smoothly. Max and Leslie. Thanks, Marcus. Sheriff's deputies are searching a neighborhood in South Bear County. They're looking for one man who ran from them after a chase. Now they have an area blocked off near Highway 281 South, just outside 1604. Katrina Weber live on Big Oak Street. So, Katrina, do we know how this all began? Yeah, it sounds like it started with a hunch by a sheriff's deputy. He saw a car that didn't quite look right, and then that car took off, leading him on a chase. Now, I just want to point out that they did open up the street that they had blocked off a little while ago, but we still have a couple of deputies here on scene. Uh, they seem to be guarding the area, perhaps where that car, the suspect's car crashed. And then uh, th there were three guys who did bail out from that car at some point. I want to give you a look at the video as well so you can see how things looked when we got here. This chase started a little bit after four o'clock this morning and uh, sheriff's deputies again say that they saw this car in a parking lot uh, nearby, nearby this area, by 1604 and 281 South. That car took off. They chased it. They found out later that that car was stolen. It led them all the way down to the Atascosa County line and then back again right to this area. They came down this street, which is Big Oak, uh, near Crossland, and this is where they crashed and some of those suspects bailed out. Again, the sheriff's deputies told me that there were three in the car originally. They did have two in custody at last check, and we're still searching this area for that last person. Uh, during the last live shot that we did, we saw those cars take off, but we haven't found out yet uh, where they were going. They seem to be in a hurry as they left this area, so we don't know if perhaps they did locate that third person. We're gonna try to find that out and let you know as soon as we know. Reporting live in South Bear County, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. Thanks to a news tip given to Crime Stoppers, a suspect accused of robbing a local convenience store has been arrested. Last month, police say 21-year-old Roy Martinez robbed the Shop and Save store in the 7300 block of Marbach Road. According to the arrest record, Martinez showed a handgun to the store clerk demanding money from the register. Martinez now facing a $75,000 bond. And it is expected to be one of the largest bonds ever proposed by San Antonio ISD. In the fall, voters will be asked to pass a $1.25 billion bond. It promises to bring much-needed improvements to more than 40 campuses. New development and increased property values are expected to pay for SAISD's bonds for the next decade. As a result, the proposed 2020 bond would not include a tax increase. Superintendent Pedro Martinez says the bonds will be presented to voters in multiple phases. The first phase is expected to appear in the November ballot for $1.25 billion. It'll pay for the first half of the 43 schools the district have slated for improvements. Many of our buildings uh, are more than 50 years old. Many of them haven't had work in at least 30 years. Voters in the district say based on what they've heard so far, they're in favor of the improvements, especially if it means no tax increase. If all goes well, in 2024, the superintendent intends to present a second bond of $1.25 billion to upgrade the remaining schools. If the bonds are approved, the 43 schools will be revamped by 2030. Now to the latest on the coronavirus. This morning, China reporting about 1,800 new virus cases and 98 more deaths. But there is some good news. A new report says that more than 80% of people infected just had mild illnesses and the number of new infections seem to be falling since earlier this month. The World Health Organization says it is still too early to know if the reported decline will continue. Well, President Donald Trump opens up a three-day four-state swing today. It starts in California. He'll attend a series of fundraisers for his re-election campaign before meeting with the LA 2028 Olympic Organizing Committee. The White House says members will update the president on preparations for the 2028 Summer Olympic Games. Meanwhile, tonight is the deadline for Democratic presidential candidates to qualify for tomorrow's debate in Las Vegas. And in a new development, billionaire Mike Bloomberg officially qualifying this morning, marking the first time he'll stand alongside his Democratic rivals. He has so far been able to avoid CNN's Whitney Wilde in Washington with a look at what comes next. 
This westbound swing is all about maintaining momentum for these candidates, and there is proof that voters in Nevada are engaged. For example, the early numbers show more than 26,000 people have already participated in the early voting portion of the caucusing. Bernie Sanders. We love you. Thank you. Love you too. Blazing into Nevada at the front of the pack, delivering a message of unity. I have absolute confidence that we are all going to unite behind that candidate and defeat the most dangerous president in the modern history of this country. The spot at the top has others in the race trying to bring him down. He's been talking about health care, me Medicare for all, universal health care for 35 years. Nothing's happened. People are much more pragmatic. They want plans and not pipe dreams. Uh, a campaign message that says that you either got to be for the revolution or you must be for the status quo. Most of us don't know where we fit in that picture. Sanders isn't the only candidate taking heat. Critics lambasted former New York City Mayor Michael Bloomberg for his campaign spending and record on issues such as stop and frisk. $60 billion can buy you a lot of advertising but it can't erase your record. Bloomberg apologized for his support of stop and frisk. Candidates now hope to confront him at the next debate. I've got to answer questions like I just did on my record, and he has to do the same thing. I know I'm not going to be able to beat him on the airwaves, but I can beat him on the debate stage. And the time period here is critical because a lot of things are happening in a very short amount of time. So the early voting caucusing ends on Tuesday the 18th. Then we have the debate. Then the caucusing ends completely on February 22nd. So a very critical few days here in Nevada. In Washington, I'm Whitney Wild. Well, many people are responding to a dramatic finish to this year's Daytona 500. Driver Ryan Newman spun out and crashed just short of the finish line. Take a look at this. His car caught fire. Doctors say he is in serious condition, but his injuries are not life-threatening. President Trump is among those responding. He tweeted out, praying for Ryan Newman, a great and brave NASCAR driver. Meanwhile, Denny Hamlin was named champion the third time in his career. And time to talk Spurs this morning. San Antonio Spurs resume their rodeo road trip this Friday. They are headed to Salt Lake City, taking on the Utah Jazz. The Spurs beat the Jazz last time they faced off. But can they do it again and start the post-All-Star break on a good note? But so far, Spurs only have scored one win away from the AT&T Center during this rodeo road trip. That was against the Thunder in Oklahoma City right before the All-Star break. And that is how they're going to wrap up their road trip. Friday's game against the Jazz starts at 8 o'clock, and the game against the Thunder starts 6 o'clock on Sunday. Go Spurs, go. Go Spurs, go. Cautious optimism. They have a ways to go. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so go Spurs, go. Got to fight your way back in there. <laughs> 610, 68 degrees out. Still ahead, Apple is letting the world know how the coronavirus is affecting its business, and it is not good. Plus, millions of families leaving their home country for a chance at a better life. Just ahead, meet a woman who is helping overlooked and vulnerable refugees. And taking a look outside with live cam. It's a messy morning, everybody. Pack patience as you head out on the road. Good morning and welcome back. 614 this Tuesday morning. 24 people forced to leave their homes every minute. That's 34,000 people every day. Our Alicia Barrera has the story of a woman who is helping to make the transition a little easier for refugees who end up in the United States. Afghanistan, Syria, Myanmar, Democratic Republic of Congo. Their citizens are leaving their homes at alarming rates. Because of war, there was a lot of war going on, so my family decided to move to Burundi. Elisa Inez, originally from the Democratic Republic of Congo, came to the U.S. five years ago. Being in a new place, she had to learn things quick. That's when she found Girl you. Forward. All of our girls have very different stories and very different experiences, but they, the things that they identify as really having in common is like being in a completely new place. Blair Brett Schneider started Girl Forward in 2011 to provide support to teen refugee girls who were thrown into an unfamiliar environment. All of these things make it really challenging to, um, to get used to living here, to make new friends, to really succeed and follow the dreams that you have for yourself. Girl Forward offers mentoring, tutoring, and safe spaces where girls can feel comfortable and open the door to new opportunities. But most importantly, Blair wants the girls to soar. Feel confident in being able to pursue the future that they want and know that there's a whole, you know, community of uh, women and girls who are behind them. 
Eliza has been coming to Girl Forward since 2015 and recently just received her high school diploma. She's now looking forward to her future. I'm hoping to go into medical field, so maybe like a nurse. Girl Forward accepts girls in grades 9 through 12, and they don't have a cutoff of how long a girl would have to be in the U.S. in order to take part in the program. Alicia Barrera, KSAT, 12 News. And back here at home, 68 degrees. Have you been outside a lot this morning? Well, just to get to work, and it was yucky. Oh, that was the worst part of the commute this morning. And to think tomorrow morning, you're going to need a big, heavy coat. Ooh, so what the question is, what do the roadways look like? Probably messy. So far, we've been very, very fortunate. Still, no accidents out there on the roadway. So as you take a look at the map, you can see no delays. So the highways are looking good. As far as your travel times are concerned, no delays in anyone's travel times. Now, what can you expect once you do venture out of the roadways? Well, that's 10 at Bernie Stage Road. So that's uh, out there. Well, for all uh, practical purposes, they'll get it first before the rest of us, and they're already getting it. So there's that fog and mist out there, as you can see, making it a little bit difficult for drivers to be able to discern the lanes of travel out there. So just remember, reduce that speed, increase that follow distance, and more importantly, low beams. Do not put your high beams on. You only blind yourself and blind others around you. Well, Leslie said it best. You got to pack your patience this morning. You got to yes. eat that for sure for the next few days, it looks like. Mm -hmm. That's not a good picture over there, Tim. Mm -hmm. No. So and it's coming this way. That's some of the, the thickest uh, fog. It's not real, real thick like yesterday, but uh, there is some out there. Plus, there is some uh, there's mist, drizzle, a little bit of rain. So that's just adding to the uh, reduced visibility and the uh, potentially fun commute. So if you are heading out right now, make sure you do take a coat. If you are going to be out, then say around dinner time because temperatures will start to cool down. This is a great picture. I love this. The Egyptian geese flying just above the water at Nimitz Lake up there in Kerrville. Thank you for that picture, Mr. Olson. That is beautiful. And there's the turtle just watching the whole show. A great shot. Okay, this is not as pretty of a picture by any means. Although, uh, you you know, visibility is pretty good here. We don't have a lot of rain showing up. There is some, obviously, on radar right now, and a couple of moderate showers here and there. Uh, a lot of the reporting sites, it seems like it's missing some of the reporting sites as of right now, but there is mist that is being uh, reported at the airport, and there's been a lot of it, so that's what we were talking about the roads. They are definitely damp this morning, and we'll continue to see some of these uh, scattered showers around all morning long throughout most of the afternoon. Now, it won't rain constantly, of course, but there's just going to be plenty of it out there. A uh, mile and a half visibility at Bernie. Uh, that's not pea soup, but like Marcus was showing on that one transguide camera, it's it's thick enough out there. Elsewhere, visibility is not bad, but if these showers start to pick up, it could obviously reduce visibility a little bit. Temperatures are what the normal high is right now, or even above that. Here in town, we're at 68. Same thing, Port SA up in New Braunfels and 63 over in Kerrville. Now, there's the colder air. There's the front just northwest of the hill country. It's kind of a slow moving front, so it will take a while to, to move on in here. It is going to be into the hill country by about, say, mid afternoon, but then it's going to take until about dinner time for that to move on through here. So around right dinner time, just after that, temperatures will have dropped down about anywhere from 15, almost 20 degrees. We'll be in the 40s up in the hill country, and then we'll continue to drop down into the 40s tomorrow morning. And then once we get down in the 40s, it's kind of like we've hit the bottom there and then temperatures aren't going to move for about 48 hours. We'll stay basically in the 40s all day long tomorrow as well as on into Thursday. It is going to be windy tomorrow and we'll have more rain around here. So windy, wet and cold. Here's the rapid update computer model. It's got scattered rain around the area throughout the afternoon, maybe even a, a thunderstorm or two. And there's the front which is going to be sliding on through here. But notice how the rain, it's not like this front clears us on out because how the rain continues to come on in here from the uh, southwest, that's the, the overrunning situation that we are in. We've got all this cooler air coming on in down here at the surface, but here's all the moisture and all the clouds coming in on that stream from the Pacific Ocean. So that's why we just stay gray, cool throughout the rest of the week. A little bit better by Friday, but not much. And we'll finally make it back up to about normal by the weekend. 69 today at noon. A couple of showers around the area just scattered about. It's going to be just sort of a damp day. And then we'll hit 72 for a high temperature. But then by late this afternoon, we'll be down into the uh, mid to upper 50s. And wind's going to be shifting around out of the north at 15 to 25 miles per hour. So it is going to be windy today as well as tomorrow. Only in the, say, mid 40s tomorrow, maybe upper 40s in a couple of spots. 
roughly the same thing on Thursday. And Friday, we start off at 40 degrees, a little bit of sunshine in the afternoon, still kind of breezy and 52. So it's going to be a cold Friday, 55 on Saturday, finally up to normal by Sunday with a couple of more showers. All right. Thank you, Mike. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mike. 621, 68 degrees out. Still ahead, former NBA superstar Dwayne Wade is offering a new look inside his life and speaking out like never before in a new ESPN interview. Here is your secret word of the day. Enter it right now on KZ.com for your chance to win a $25 gift card from We Are Circle K. When I started Cobra Kai, the lack of control over my business made me a little intense. But now QuickBooks helps me get paid, manage cash flow, and run payroll. And now I'm back on top with Koala Kai. Save over 40 hours a month with Intuit QuickBooks. She's driven by a primal desire for meat, a lynx in the wild, and your cat. For a lynx, this need is satisfied by what the wild provides. For your cat, it's meat-rich blue wilderness. Because your cat is wild inside. Shop Incredible Supervised during Macy's President's Day Sale. Update the living room with this Radley sectional for $1,879. Or the bedroom with this queen bed for just $299. Plus, get a free adjustable base with select mattress purchases. Now at Macy's. Can you heal dry skin in a day? Aveeno with Prebiotic Triple Oat Complex balances skin's microbiome. So skin looks like this and you feel like this. Aveeno Skin Relief. Get skin healthy. In this morning's GMA First Look, NBA superstar Dwayne Wade opening up like never before in the new ESPN documentary, D. Wade, Life Unexpected. A lot of you guys see me as a superhero. The 38-year-old revealing details about not only his professional life, but his family as well, raising his four children, including 12-year-old daughter Zaya, who recently came out as transgender. Wade says he and his wife, actress wife. Gabrielle Union, did not have all the answers when Zaya first approached them and began educating themselves to support their daughter. So if my child comes home and say, hey dad, I feel that I am a she. My job is to help you become who you are. And coming up at 7 a.m., the three-time champion joins Robin Roberts. With your GMA First Look, I'm Elizabeth Herr, ABC News, New York. And latest on the coronavirus, the virus having a major impact on Apple. The company cutting its sales expectations for the current quarter. Apple says its smartphone supply being hampered because Chinese factories have been closed due to that disease. It also says the virus is affecting the demand in China. Another car brand is getting ready to go electric. Cadillac now says its first all-electric vehicle, a midsize crossover, will be officially unveiled in April. Cadillac has already promised the majority of its vehicles will be electric by 2030. And United Airlines customers will apparently have a new snacking option on board, and it's coming just next month. According to USA Today, United plans to start serving Oreo thins to its passengers. Mm. The cookies will reportedly join pretzels and Stroop waffle as one of the snack choices. Stroop waffles are delicious. If you what are they? I don't know what they are. They're like little cookies, and they're like sweet inside. They're oh, delicious. Really? Yeah. And they look like waffles? I a little bit. Yes, yeah. I've seen them. Okay, mm -hmm. now I know what you're talking about. Anyway, you're going to have that as a choice snack on United and United Express flights. The Oreo Thins would replace the popular Biscoff cookies. The switch is supposed to happen in March, but if you're a Biscoff fan, fear not. United says <laughs> it's trying to figure out if the cookie fits in future snack rotation options for the coming year. There you go. At least I'm you have your waffles. Yeah, got the waffles, got the Oreos. We're good to what go. What could you eat? It's all good stuff. 627 now and 68 degrees. A barrage by hundreds of sex abuse lawsuits. The Boy Scouts of America filing bankruptcy protection. What that means for local scouting programs. Plus, we're going to have more on why a student at Smithson Valley High School is collecting her fellow students' used shoes. Now let's take a live look out of the roads right now. 37 and Jones Avenue, 281 and 410. Looks smooth out there despite the gross conditions. We're going to check in with Mike and Officer Trujillo just after the break. A chase involving a stolen car ends almost where it began, but Bear County deputies not quite through with this case yet. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber, and I'll tell you why. Coming up, more Americans evacuated after testing positive for the coronavirus. I'm Andrew Dimbert in Washington with the latest. 
and taking a live look out there in the Alamo City. Mike, what do you call it? Almost pea soup? Uh, in, yeah. Not quite. Not quite. Uh, We're on the line. Yeah. Right. But you're going to want soup coming up starting tomorrow night. Look at that tease. That was great. <laughs> What Thank is you. your, your go-to cold you, weather meal? I've already bought the stuff. I'm making mm. homemade chicken and dumplings tomorrow night. Ooh. So it, just the dumplings with the flour and shortening and baking Well, it's a, healthy it was a healthy recipe, oh, and chefs. so it has a um, healthy request Bisquick mix with a little bit of sage and some fat oh, so milk. Oh, so Bisquick. Okay. Yes. Feel free to bring in samples. She's That's, going to. I told him I would. Ooh. I know. So Let's get just, back to the topic. But I think you're off on Thursday. No, you're not. You no, I am. He'll come no. In. But I might come in. How's Travis <laughs> Marcus? <laughs> oh, yes, we digress. Sorry about that, everybody. <laughs> Traffic not too bad, considering. Now, yesterday was a big mess, but uh, the weather, uh, your driving conditions were actually worse earlier in the morning. So the bad news is we still haven't hit our peak congestion point yet. So with this uh, starting to come in, we already saw it at Bernie Sage Road. Started to come in a little bit closer yes. to 410 inside 1604, so that potential is there. Could be a very, very messy commute. If you're getting ready to leave the house, you haven't left yet, probably want to give it an extra 10 to 15 minutes this morning. And if you are leaving, grab a jacket? Yes. If you are going to be out past uh, late this afternoon, like dinner time into the early evening hours, because temperatures will uh, continue to drop down. And then it's going to come in sooner in the hill country. So, uh, if, you know, we're depending on where you live. Probably going to have a problem for allergy sufferers with mold after all this rain in the forecast. Yes, and given the fact that it's going to stay damp for the next um, two, three days. 66 degrees, uh, we stay in the mid-60s right now. That's pretty much our normal high temperature. Then we're going to make it up to 72, but that's going to be uh, here in town basically right after school. Obviously, it's going to cool down quicker in the hill country. And then, like I said, by dinner time, temperatures will uh, continue to drop down. The wind's going to be shifting around out of the north and it's going to be kind of blustery. We have got, well, this is not a bad picture, actually. You know, visibility is okay out there at the airport. Obviously, it's a little bit out of uh, focus. We do still have some of these showers that are sliding through the area. And the thing to really take note of is the fact that it's coming from southwest to northeast. That's not going to change. Even though we're going to have wind shifts and all that down here at the surface with the front moving through, we're going to have that uh, flow coming in here from the southwest. And that's the overrunning situation, which means you get cold air here at the surface, you get warm, moist air on top of it, and you keep clouds around. And that holds temperatures steady. That means it's going to be soup weather for the next uh, couple of days. There's some light and even a couple of moderate showers maybe up there in far northern portions of uh, Bear County up around Holotus heading up toward uh, 281. Just some uh, scattered light rain, a lot of mist around the area. So yeah, the roads are definitely damp. Everybody's in the mid 60s right now. And we were talking about the allergens. Mold's low. This was yesterday's count. Uh, of course, the updated reading is going to come out in about a half hour, 45 minutes or so, and have a feeling that mold is going to be going up. As far as the weekend forecast, it's going to be a bit warmer. we got to make it through the next couple of days, though. Details coming up in a few minutes. Time saver traffic right now. And, yeah, like you've been saying, so far so good. It's been pretty quiet. Not bad yet. Uh, so if you're getting ready to head out, you should be uh, fairly safe. However, uh, there are those little areas, those clover leaves, where things can get just a little slick. Just remember, slow down well ahead of any of those turns or curves. You do not want to be using your brake in any of those turns and curves. Now, 21 and winding away, very heavy traffic on the southbound main lanes at 21. Here in the downtown area, I-10 at the Y, you can see no problems around that fine silver turn, and then no problems here, 21 at Hildebrandt. Max and Leslie. Thank you, Officer Trujillo. We are continuing to following a developing story. Bear County Sheriff's deputies keeping an eye on a neighborhood for the one who got away. They say the man ran from a stolen car after it crashed in an area off of Highway 281 South outside of Loop 1604. Our Katrina Weber is there with a live report. And you mentioned earlier, Katrina, that they did catch up with two other men. Well, that's right. They did take two into custody, but they say one of them ran from the vehicle here. Uh, this street is called Big Oak, and this is on a piece of private property. We're just west of Highway 281 South. Uh, this is where uh, sheriff's deputies have been looking. Right now, it seems that they are keeping an eye uh, just sort of sitting there. They did have some of the streets blocked off earlier, but they have uh, opened those streets back up again. Uh, what happened earlier is that a deputy spotted a car, which turned out to be stolen, in the parking lot of a convenience store. He thought something was suspicious, and at that point, the driver saw the deputy and took off. 
Now, they went on a chase that lasted probably 20 minutes. It went down to the Atascosa County line and then back to the same neighborhood again. And this is where the car crashed on this private property. And then uh, that is where the suspects also bailed out. And again, they said they did catch up with two of them, but they are still looking for one man. We have not received a description of him, but they have been checking this neighborhood pretty thoroughly. And as I said, they had the streets blocked off earlier, but they have opened them up since. Reporting live in South Bear County, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. Voters can start casting ballots today at more than 30 early voting locations across Bear County. And so far, a record number of registered voters. There are more than 1.1 million people registered to vote in the Texas March primaries. That number up from 2018 and 2016, when more than 900,000 voters registered. Democrats and Republicans will be having their own ballots, and we have sample ballots on KSAT.com right now. Races include candidates running for president, sheriff, and several other local positions, and several propositions. Now you can find all this information right now, KSAT.com, under the politics section. More than a dozen Americans who tested positive for the coronavirus are back in the United States. Two planes touching down in California and here in Texas. Those passengers now under a new quarantine here at home. ABC's Andrew Dimber joins us from Washington with the latest. This morning, 14 Americans evacuated from a cruise ship in Japan who tested positive for coronavirus are back in the U.S. Some arrived in Texas Monday before traveling to a specialized national quarantine unit in Nebraska for further evaluation. We have the facilities, we have the resources and the expertise to handle these kind of individuals. Ten have already tested positive for the virus, now officially named COVID-19. And on that Diamond Princess cruise ship in Japan, more cases found. So far, 542 cruise passengers have been infected. Passenger Jerry Larson was one of those stuck at sea. It was fine. We were very well taken care of. We were very lucky. We had uh, a bigger room and a full balcony. Uh, they fed us well. I felt like they were taking extremely good care of us. Meanwhile, a second flight of evacuated Americans from Japan. The bus will take you to the airplane. The airplane takes you to the United States. Landing at Travis Air Force Base in California, another quarantine zone. I have to put my mask on. At least four of those passengers also testing positive and across the globe, coronavirus crossing more than two dozen countries while World Health officials work to stop the spread. WHO is continuing to work night and day on several fronts to prepare countries. We're providing advice to countries on how to do screening testing, contact tracing, and treatment. All but two of the cases in the U.S. are linked to travel to Wuhan, China, the center of the outbreak. Andrew Dimber, ABC News, Washington. It could be one of the biggest and most complex bankruptcies ever seen. The Boy Scouts of America has filed for bankruptcy protection as it faces new sexual abuse lawsuits. The organization could be forced to sell off some of its vast property holdings, the filing is an attempt to work out a potential compensation plan for abuse victims who will allow the 110-year-old organization to continue. In a statement, the organization says local scouting programs will continue throughout this process and for many years to come. And tonight, the deadline for the Democratic presidential candidates to qualify for tomorrow's debate set for Las Vegas. So far, several of the eight remaining candidates have qualified. That includes former Vice President Joe Biden, Senators Bernie Sanders, Elizabeth Warren, and Amy Klobuchar. And now, as of this morning, Mike Bloomberg. Juries in Harvey Weinstein's New York rape trial will begin deliberations for the first time today. Seven men and five women are considering the case against him. He's charged with raping a woman in a Manhattan hotel room in 2013 and forcibly performing sex acts on another in 2006. He has denied any wrongdoing. And today, a group of federal judges holding an emergency meeting over concerns about the Department of Justice's intervention in politically sensitive cases. Now, this comes as more than 2,000 former prosecutors and Justice Department officials signed a statement calling on Attorney General Bill Barr to resign. All of this in the aftermath of the involvement overruling the sentencing recommendations for longtime President Trump associate Roger Stone. Well, how's this for irony? A man with a tattoo that says crime pays, look that right on his forehead, has been arrested in Indiana. Police say Donald Murray led officers on a short chase. He's charged with resisting law enforcement, reckless driving, possession of methamphetamine, and auto theft. Murray was arrested last year when he led police on another chase. So the question remains, did it pay off? Uh, apparently not. No.
Time now, 640, 68 degrees out. Here's what's coming up. The shoes on your feet. It's something that we can take for granted. I'm Sarah Costa coming up on GMSA. How one local student wants your old shoes. Good morning and happy Tuesday, 644 right now. The shoes on your feet. It's something that we take for granted every day. But one pair of old shoes can go a long way for someone who just went through a natural disaster or someone in a third world country. Sarah Costa spoke with one student at Smithson Valley High School about why she's collecting her fellow students used shoes. Souls for Souls. It's a nonprofit that takes your old shoes and recycles them by giving them to someone in need. A senior here at Smithson Valley High School says her shoe drive is more than just collecting your old shoes. You don't open your closet and think, oh, well, I just have all these shoes. Like you don't worry about, is there going to be a pair of shoes that I get to wear to school so I don't end up getting, you know, cuts and bruises or infections that could possibly kill me in my feet. For the past several weeks, Abigail has been collecting old shoes across all the Kamal ISD campuses. Last year, she surprised herself when she collected over 5,000 shoes for her first drive for Souls for Souls. This year, she hopes to surpass that number. Once counted up and collected, the shoes will go to the local DSW designer shoe warehouse. From there, those shoes will be distributed to people right here in the U.S. that have either suffered a natural disaster to across the globe in a third world country, where Abigail says some have to walk to school or to collect water for miles barefoot. You never know when crisis and disaster is going to strike. It can strike anyone. It doesn't matter your race, your socioeconomic status, it doesn't matter. It can strike anyone at any time. And so I think it's important for us to prepare for that. I just personally really love helping people. I love volunteering and giving back. So it's just really important to me to know that someone is being helped who isn't necessarily getting that help because Souls for Souls has donated shoes to 127 countries, excluding the U.S. So knowing that it's going somewhere where someone needs it and all I had to do was donate my shoes, that's just a really great feeling. For GMSA, I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. And trending right now on KSAT.com, Damari Carroll's short, frustrating, and odd stint with the Spurs reportedly coming to an end. ESPN says that the Spurs and Carroll have agreed on a contract buyout. You can find more details what led up to this change right now, KSAT.com. Texas Monthly released a list of the top 10 best new restaurants in Texas, and San Antonio Saver rounded out the list at number 10. Mm. Saver offers a global inspired menu available in three or four course options. Texas Monthly also lists San Antonio's Evo as an honorable mention. Check out the list and more details on KSAT.com. All right, I'm just going to throw it right to Officer Trujillo because it looks like he has something to say. Uh-oh, he always does. Whoa. Oh, no, you're not saying, oh, you're so bad. Fake this out. <laughs> not much going on on the roadways, but uh, look at all this traffic that we do have. So luckily, no accidents this time, but 604 could live very busy. Moving over here, 281 at Widening Way. Just look at that volume of traffic headed from uh, 604 southbound along 281, eventually towards the airport area. Right now, I-10, 410, also very busy in all four directions. And then uh, 410 and Fredericksburg, real close to that intersection. You can see east and westbound lanes of 410. Definitely getting a move on this morning. 37 at Jones, northbound 37 looking pretty good, that right-hand lane. Backing up for folks that are exiting southbound into the downtown vicinity. And this is what everyone's dreading. That's I-10 at Bernie Sage Road. And yeah. it is getting, visibility is getting a little bit worse out there. Now, what <laughs> does surprise me about this is uh, I'm not seeing lines of traffic headed towards San Antonio just yet. So maybe there's some alarm clocks that didn't go off. Not really <laughs> sure, but uh, by this time, usually this section of I-10 is pretty packed. Mm. I say with this weather, you get like the warrant to 15 minutes extra snooze. There you go. So Leslie said you could take the day off. Max says you can be 15 <laughs> minutes late. He just late. said you can sleep in a little bit. 15 minutes. Oh, you can still I get think, to work. But it sounds like tomorrow and Thursday are the days you're going to want to sleep in. Yes. Tomorrow and Thursday, you just want to throw the blankets back over your head because it's just going to be cold, wet, um, but got to grin and bear it. Love this picture. Blue bonnets were already starting Can't to see some it. of the pictures. It's a great shot there. Thank you very much. And don't forget the KSAC Connect pictures, especially 
with the blue bonnet season coming up here. All right, this is what it looks like out by the airport. That's not bad, especially uh, when you compare it to the Transguide camera that Marcus just showed out there right around 10 Bernie Stage Road. We do have a little bit of light rain around the area. Um, it, it almost looks like this has sort of started to break up compared to what it was earlier this morning, but obviously there's still a few light showers out there and there's a lot of mist out there as well that is too light to be picked up on. So most of the roads are definitely on the damp side. Mile and three quarter visibility uh, officially out there in toward Bernie stage, but you know, it, a little bit uh, further down the road, it may be slightly less than that. And then elsewhere, visibility is not bad as of right now, but it may get a little thicker uh, depending on really what the, the wind does, especially this morning. 68 is the current temperature. Same thing, Port S.A., Balverde, and New Braunfels. We are actually above what our normal high is for this time of year. There's the front up there to the north of us. Got some 40s and 30s going up into parts of the Panhill. It's kind of a slow moving front. It's uh, started to work its way through San Angelo and obviously it's going to be coming through the, the hill country first of all, but we are going to be warming up into the low 70s by late this afternoon and then roughly about dinner time as the front passes temperature should be dropping off about uh, 10 15 degrees or so and the wind's going to be shifting around to the northwest. So you'll definitely feel it. So if you are heading out and going to be out uh, through the evening hours right around sunset dinner time. Make sure you take a jacket, especially in the hill country, because by uh, this evening you're going to be down in the 40s. And then once that cooler air moves in here, temperatures aren't going anywhere for roughly 48 hours up through Thursday and then Friday morning. We're going to stay in the 40s. It's going to be damp and chilly out there, and we will continue to have some of these showers around throughout the rest of today, going into tonight as well as tomorrow. Yeah, like I said, pull the covers over your head tomorrow morning and Thursday morning if you can. 69 degrees today at noon with a few showers. We will hit our high temperature about mid-afternoon, and then temperatures will be dropping down late this afternoon. We'll still have some showers, maybe even a couple of thunderstorms around here. Winds out of the north at 15 to 25 miles per hour and continue to drop down into the 40s overnight and stay in the 40s throughout the day tomorrow with more rain, kind of breezy rain on Thursday, only in the 40s, and then we'll make it up to 52 on Friday. Still chilly out there, kind of breezy, and back to the mid-60s by Sunday with a couple of showers. And we were talking about this a couple minutes ago. This is like the first weekend in a while that there haven't been ideal conditions out there. Yeah, we had a few more clouds this past weekend, but still, it still turned nice. out very good. But this one, it's going to be kind of cool on Saturday and uh, a little, little damp on Sunday. I'm going to the rodeo. Oh, you are? Mm -hmm. I haven't been yet. Oh. Looking forward to it. Mm-hmm. Your time now is 651 and it is 68 degrees. And taking a live look out there. Mike has been talking about it all morning. Close to pea soup, not there yet. We have a lot more coming up. We'll be right back. More than 20 minutes long and more than 100 miles per hour. Those are just some of the stats from a chase this morning in South Bear County. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. That chase ended here off of a street called Big Oak Drive. This is near Highway 281 South. You can see deputies back here. They've been keeping an eye on the car that was involved and also keeping watch out for one man who ran from that car. This started after four o'clock this morning when a deputy noticed a suspicious car in a parking lot not far from here. He says when that driver saw him, the driver took off. That led to a chase again that lasted more than 20 minutes, went down to the Atascosa County line and back to the same area at one point reaching speeds of about 105 miles per hour. The two of those men did get out and run away, but deputies managed to catch them. They're still looking for the third man who ran away from the scene. Reporting from South Bear County, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Major accident, folks, eastbound Highway 90 at 36th Street. But as we take a closer look, uh, because it is backing up traffic just a little bit, we see that it's not on the main lanes. It's actually on the access road. Access road down to just one lane, eastbound Highway 90 at 36th Street. Mike? We do have some light rain. As you can see, the uh, streets were definitely damp in that picture. And light rain is going to continue throughout most of the day. Temperatures are very warm right now. We are going to hit a high of about 72. That's going to be mid-afternoon, and then we'll drop down late in the day. And tonight, wind out of the north at 15, 25 miles per hour. Very blustery, and it's going to stay very chilly, wet, breezy tomorrow. Temperatures only in the 40s through Thursday. A little bit of sunshine Friday and Saturday. Finally back to the mid-60s by Sunday. All right, thank you. And thank you so much for being with us this morning. We'll see you back here at 9 a.m.